Keeping the show, we have France and Singapore announcing an experiment on CBDC, MasterCard's acquisition of CypherTrace, and Brazil's deposit tokenization on the Real Digital. I'm your host, Mauricio Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. In the first drop of today, we report on a newly announced experiment on CBDCs by the Bank of France and the Monetary Authority of Singapore. They announced the successful completion of a wholesale cross-border payment and settlement experience that used a central bank digital currency or a pair of central bank digital currencies. The experience was supported by JP Morgan uh, Onyx and simulated cross-border transactions that involved multiple CBDCs on a single network between both Singapore and France. The cross-border payments industry currently is based on the arrangements with uh, correspondent banks. And these are subject to not only limited transparency on the rates that they practice, but also they have restricted operating hours of the payment infrastructure. And the currency settlement has delays because of differences in time zones. So to address these challenges, this particular experiment used a common network for the uh, what they call the MCBDC, which aimed at facilitated cross-border payments at 24-7, which is pretty interesting uh, and not very common in the traditional uh, banking processes. And it's interesting that this is um, not only the first, but it's one of the most recent uh, Bank to France wholesale experiment, uh, experiences, um, and they will all be achieved by the fall of this year. But it's the first multiple CBDC experiment that they did, um, and also that applied automated market making and liquidity management that would um, allow for uh, better cross-border payment and settlement efficiencies. So the experiment that simulated all these transactions using the Singapore dollar on CBDC and the euro on CBDC was conducted using a quorum blockchain um, that was permissioned and private. And they were able to pull out four major outcomes on this experiment. Uh, Number one. Uh, they were able to prove that there is interoperability across different cloud infrastructure. The nodes were set up across private and public clouds uh, in both countries. Two, the design of a common multi-CBDC network that enabled two central banks to have visibility on the process of cross-border payments and settlement and also retained independent control on the issuance and distribution of their own particular CBDCs. The setup of this uh, multi-CBDC network incorporated automated liquidity pool and market making services for the parity of Euro and uh, Singapore dollar and the use of smart contracts uh, automatically uh, managed the pairing euro Singapore dollar currency exchange in line with real time market transactions uh, and the demand. And fourth, the simulation of the experimental multi CBDC network showed that the number of correspondent banking uh, parties involved in the payment chain for us the, uh, for the cross border transactions uh, can be reduced, and also the number of contractual arrangements the burden of know your customer processes uh, and all the associated costs could also be uh, reduced uh, on this uh, experiment. So there it is. It's not only the novelty 
of using blockchain to automate the process and the liquidity and all that, but also what costs and efficiencies can be brought um, into the process. So increased efficiency, reduced cost, less people involved, less data moving back and forth, and more data being made available for transparency uh, sake. So we'll keep an eye on this because this is certainly one of the major use cases for wholesale uh, CBDCs and I'm interested to see which countries come next in doing so with other types of blockchain. No stranger to blockchain and acquisitions, MasterCard announced that they're expanding their capabilities on digital assets by acquiring CypherTrace. CypherTrace is one of the major cryptocurrency intelligence companies around and they provide insights in over 900 cryptocurrencies. The acquisition comes um, from MasterCard which with uh, Visa is also doing this sort of boundary movement between the traditional finance world and the cryptocurrency world and we've reported on them many, many times here in the podcast, and also under the premise that digital assets, both in form of cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens, will become increasingly more uh, present in our daily lives, which means increased transaction volumes, which also increase uh, need for trust and security. That's where CypherTrace's uh, acquisition comes into play because CypherTrace currently provides uh, insights and security and trust monitoring for uh, crypto-related activities for over 7,000 cryptocurrency entities around the world, including banks, crypto exchanges, and other types of financial institutions. That means that MasterCard will be able to combine their own technology, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity capabilities with those from CypherTrace, now in the realm of cryptocurrencies, and allow customers and other stakeholders to build upon these solutions to protect their own customers and comply to regulations as they build their own presence in the digital asset uh, space, which is remarkable. CypherTrace will also help uh, MasterCard to continue innovating in the space along with a range of other partners, uh, be it fintechs or wallet providers, governments, regulators, law enforcement, etc., and will allow MasterCard to also deliver on the principles uh, of their own blockchain-related program. What I find most interesting about this is that we're seeing, this this seems and, and sort of shows the level of maturity of the digital asset industry that is rapidly evolving, and it sort of pointed out to me that there's this whole other space in the industry that sometimes is really overlooked because we keep following the hype on what's the next cryptocurrency boom, uh, what is the next protocol, uh, what is the trend of DeFi, NFT that's coming next, uh, what are the countries that are issuing new CBDCs, and we sort of overlook this all this whole other aspect of the industry which are this I want to say you know accessory companies but these are all sorts of products and services that if we want crypto or blockchain to become mainstream they have to innovate from inside out of the existing industries and these are the standard uh, ways of working on the existing industries we have to have security and um, fraud prevention firms in all capabilities and we're certainly going to see more and more of these sort of sideline companies from the crypto space to make their way into the mainstream 
because they bring the level of standard that the existing traditional industries are used to operate with now in the digital asset space. And that's certainly going to be uh, a sort of enabler of a bigger adoption of blockchain and crypto in the traditional space. So I'm happy to see this happening and I'm looking forward to learning more about these companies that are working on the sidelines to make sure that this transformation, this industry transformation is done on the regulated terms and everyone gets the benefit from the blockchain benefits that come with it. And one more from our CBDC news desk. The Brazilian Central Bank President, Roberto Campos Neto, revealed this week new details about the implementation of Brazil's own CBDC, the Digital Real. According to Campos Neto, the central bank will uh, perform, uh, starting in 2022, a number of proofs of concepts uh, on the Real Digital, including blockchain-based tests. In 2023, there will be a controlled implementation by the central bank within its own innovation labs and also uh, some uh, closed group pilots with specific groups uh, in the society and the economy. Beginning of 2024, the decisions will be made about the process and potentially the start of the implementation for the general audience. The president also reaffirmed that the central bank intends uh, the, real, the, the digital real to be a part of its uh, uh, evolution agenda for the national financial system and it's part of their digital transformation agenda BC hash. So the national CBDC of Brazil is not being developed just to be a replacement to the uh, regular real and just for payments because Brazil has already a function that works for this purpose which is uh, PIX, P-I-X, which is the um, instant payment system in Brazil which according to the central bank works as the payment digital currency already and the upcoming open banking framework that's being implemented uh, this year next year in, in Brazil will be the basis for a new digital economy based in data that will rely on the digital real as its uh, financial instrument. The intention with the digital real is to enable a new and broad um, portfolio of services based on smart contracts and decentralized finance, the so-called DeFi. So this sort of warms my heart because I really believe that uh, if we are to use blockchain for the digital real, and according to what I've read, the many forums I've taken part on both participating and listening, it seems really clever that we're not going to use blockchain for everything and anything uh, in Brazil, but also focused on what blockchains have, you know, as their most strong feature, which is pretty much automating or programming money. So this is in line with this uh, many this, these many discussions that I, uh, I took part on and it, it's 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 glad I'm glad to see that this is coming out from the president of the central bank. Uh, in the same vein, uh, the president reaffirmed the um, previous uh, statements from the directors of the central bank in which uh, the central bank plans the digital real as a native token of a big ecosystem. And for that, banks and other financial institutions will be able to tokenize their deposits, aiming uh, for new functionalities based on that particular token. And I quote, the banks uh, will be allowed to tokenize their deposits so that it can be used in a new platform for intermediation in conjunction with the CBDC with access to programmable money and other smart contract functionalities, end quote. The president also um, asserted that the digital real will enable the financial system uh, for applications uh, related to Internet of Things, IOTs, and it's uh, in study as to how the, the digital real platform 
will be able to be connected with the current block, public blockchains such as Ethereum, uh, Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Cardano, Tron, among others. Um, and they reinforce that uh, digital real is not the death of the physical money. And I'm glad it isn't because Brazil is such a diverse and um, country in, in all senses that I don't want this digital real to become another um, you know, fuel for gap, you know, socioeconomic gap. So I'm hoping that the digital real will finally bring the country together and help bridge those gaps uh, in the so socioeconomic space because that's you know one of the promises of blockchain block drops podcast is available on spotify anchor google podcasts and apple Podcasts, and most of the major podcast platforms you can contact us by email on blockdropspodcast at gmail.com on instagram at Block Drops Podcast and on Twitter at Block Drops Pod. Yay! Shout outs today to Nitin Gaur, Tom Manor, Paul Brody, and Mauricio Krambeck, who provided the links you will find in today's episode notes. This is all for today. See you next time. Ciao.